What's up, all Power Rider's crew? Today's video, we're working on a 2006 model TJ. Front axle U joint, popping like crazy. Yeah, crazy. I'll get it. I'll get it right in a minute. Yeah. So, what we're going to do is first, we're going to show you the diagnosis. We're going to twist that drive shaft a little bit, show you guys how that thing pops, or at least the clearance in the U joint. All right, come on. Listen and watch this. Need a light on it? Nah, I'm good. This camera does pretty good at low light situations. All right, check this out. Here's your stub shaft going to your wheel bearing, to your wheel, and all that fun stuff. Axle going back, well, into the axle. Look at that movement. Up and down. Back up like this. U joint is shot. First thing we need to do. Get that tire off. Jack it up safely. So when you get it jacked up, what I like to do, of course, you got the jack stand right there. Always stick your tire under the frame just in case something crazy might happen. And I guess for a nice safety, safety measure, the jack is still touching the axle. It's got like minimal pressure on it, but you can't be too safe. Yeah, you, know, you want to drive your Jeep again so you don't want it falling on you, you know. So the first thing you want to do is take your brake caliper bolts out, half inch socket will get it done. You got one here. And one right down here. Get them out. So next, after you get the bolts out, you need to pry your caliper. We'll pry from right here. It'll tilt backwards. You slide off the disc. You can use a pry bar. I got this funky looking ratchet thingy here. It's got a hammer here, hammer here, and pry bar end. If y'all know what it's called, tell me down in the description. I kind of found it at a tractor supply, and I just had to have it, so I bought it. Anyway, I need two hands. Sometimes whenever you're pulling your brake caliper outward like this, you can see that this right here does okay. This right here is wanting to stick to the disc. Not really stick to the disc, it's just the case it doesn't pull out as easily as this out one, I guess. This outer one. So sometimes you gotta get in behind it with a screwdriver, give it a little nudge. Then I want you to do the slide right out. Lay your caliper off the side, lay it on your arm, wherever you can to keep from your brake line. Do not stretch your brake line. You have to tie you a string through something, tie it up here or something, but do not let the weight hang down on your brake line. Grab your disc. And just work it on off. We're just about there. Now, if I already pulled the cotter key out, because we was actually checking to make sure we had the right socket, which is a 36 millimeter. So once you pull the cotter key out, you're going to pull this. You got this little spring right here, you'll pull this, and then we gotta get that off. Now what we did was we took a 36 millimeter pop, put it down there, took the long breaker bar, put the pressure on it, but TJ's you can do this, YJ's you cannot. You put it four-wheel drive, which will prevent this axle from turning because that tire is on the ground. T uh, YJ's you cannot do that because you've got, right there in the middle, you get that central axle disconnect on the passenger side. Now if you've got the TJ conversion where you take the axles from a TJ, Put it in a YJ, giving you the one-piece axle. You can do that. But if you have the posi lock system on the central axle disconnect on a YJ, you've got to lock that in because the YJs have a short stub shaft. You got your stub shaft here, a short axle here, then you got the central axle disconnect, which is back here on the YJs, not the TJs. TJs, you have a solid axle from here across. But you could break that nut loose with the brakes before you take it up. Yeah, exactly. Or you'd be smart just. Leave the brake rudder on and the brake, hold the brake, break it loose, and there you go. Do it the smart way. So now that we got that broken loose, we'll back that out a little bit. But what we gotta do now, we gotta get our unit bearing off, which is now let's cruise back here to the back. You've got one right there, right underneath your brake sensor. There. Oh, kick my hand there. Right there. And the other one is like way over here. Right there. 13 millimeter 12 point. Get them out because that releases your unit bearing here or your wheel bearing. So you can pull it back. That'll enable you to pull the axle out. Then once you get all three of those bolts out, you just take a wiggle a little bit. Most of the time it unseats the unit bearing and brings it on out. And you can leave the nut on it for right now. This unit bearing here, or wheel bearing, whatever you want to call it, is relatively new. Um, when Dad put it on, 
He put the anesthesia on the shaft, which is a huge help for you because if you ever have to pull it back off like we're doing right now, that axle shaft, the stub shaft, will not seize up to the unit bearing. So use that anesthesia where you can save yourself some headache. You see right here, he put it there. That's where I got all my smarts from. <laughs> So, all right, so good thing about Dana 30 shafts, Dana 30 axles, you don't need to go back up there and pull a C clip like you do on the 8.8s and some of the other axles, they just slide right out. You off roaders know what I'm talking about on that one. Yeah, you see right there, you can see the anesthesia he put in there do that do that do that you see how easy that unit bearing came off the stub shaft all right so i'm gonna go ahead and pull this one off you can change the um u joint with it on the unit bearing on but it's actually a lot easier if you take it off we don't know watch this watch this watch this Ta -da, so easy and it's easy saves the day all right dude that thing is done. Alrighty, let's get that baby knocked out. So what I'm doing first is I'm digging for the end of the clip that goes around your U-joint. You can see it right there. I just had to take the screwdriver, knock all the junk out of the way. You can see the end of it right there. So we gotta get those clips out of there. That one, see, this right here is actually on the other side of it. Yeah, right there was the end of it. I dug it out too. So we gotta get them out, and then we'll get it off the stub shaft. Or you can take it off the stub shaft first, which are when you feel froggy. So what I mean by the C clips, see this right here? Well, it's shaped like a C in it. And what I showed you the end of it, the edges of it inside there, what's doing, these clips go around this right here and they snap in place. Which I'm not gonna snap that in place right at the moment because you'll see when I go put the new ones in. But I just wanna give you guys a quick idea of what it is we need to do. Because unless these, these clips have gotta come out, if they don't, the U-joints don't move. Okay, you see right here, I've got the clip knocked partially out. I didn't want to knock it completely out. But what I did, well, I do, but I just want to show you guys on the camera shot. Take the edge of your screwdriver, hang it on the edge of that clip right there. Then take your hammer and bump the back end of it right here. Or sometimes you take the palm of your hand if they're not stuck too bad. And what you can do is you can knock that clip out. Hold the camera back right there. You take the hanging screwdriver right there and you go on the back side with your hammer and just tap. It knocks that clip right out of there. Little survivor is a girl. There it goes. And that's all you gotta do. So we're about to test out my new toy here. I got Froggy, uh, I don't know, a couple days ago, made this thing to see how it works. And it was, the theory behind this is, I put this against the U-joint cap here, pull the trigger, because it's a little air hammer thingy, and it should knock that U-joint out of the axles in the stub shaft. We're going to find out. Alright, let's see if this crazy contraption works now. Okay, here's my deduction here. Is it going to work? Yes. Is it slow? Yeah, too slow. I'm getting a hammer. <laughs> Okay, so we broke out the heavy artillery. Ain't got time for all the beating and banging when it didn't want to move. So we already pressed one of the caps out here. We just flipped the axle over. Now we're gonna take and push the cap out the other side. And that freaks people out when that happens. And what you gotta watch is, I keep looking back here. 
this right here is coming down, which you gotta make sure it doesn't hit the outside part of the axle shaft here or the stub shaft if you're pressing it, because it'll booger it up and it could possibly could crack and damage your shaft. And you got a big socket in there for it to. Yeah. And you'll notice here in a moment, as Dad mentioned, is that whenever this uh, U joint cap is coming down, there's a socket right here that's larger than the diameter of the uh, U joint cap, as you'll see here in a moment, that allows that to pass all the way through and down into this and gives you the room to press it out. I'll pick it up and you see where it's pressing it down through like this. Now I've got other videos too where I've changed out U joints on different methods. Release into that one. Then I release my jack. And this ain't nothing but a cheapy Harbor Freight, uh, Harbor Freight press that has served me well for many years. But you see how big that socket is right there and the usual the cap goes down through that. Uh, chain locks. bearings everywhere but as you see here's the cap look at that dust it was gone that did kind of sling bearings everywhere when I took the cap off but you see right there how bad it was just gone but you see also what I mean by the sockets big enough for the cap to go through but you want your socket small enough that it gets proper support to the shaft in the uh, stub shaft I'll show you that here in a moment you notice we're fighting getting this cross out of here because that rubber cup he's digging on right there, you rip them out of there. Screwdriver, pliers, whatever suits your fancy. That gives it room for it to push the usual one back this way and then to work it out. Drop that down. Up here. Hook them to it here. And pull it out. Then you take your cross, position it this way, rock it upward, bring it out. And there's your stub shaft. We got it out. Now we got to take care of this right here. Doing the same thing over here. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago about making sure your socket is big enough, you want it again big enough that this goes through, no problems, okay? But you want it small enough that your ears here on your axle shaft and your stub shaft that it supports that but still allows this to come through. See, you don't want it so big that's hanging out over like this right here because then you've got no support. Then you're placing all the pressure on one part of it, you can bust your uh, stub shaft or axle shaft, which are when you're pressing. So, again, making sure place your socket right there to support. Now, I don't care if you're using a press like we're doing here or using a hammer like we was doing a minute ago or that air tool that I tried to make that didn't work as well. If we have you look, want to look at it, support, 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 because you can't, I have actually busted these ears from doing the wrong thing. So that's what we're gonna do right here. When you bring your down, you want to make sure you're centered as well as possible. And drop your jack handle through. Okay, see this ball here. Bring it over here. Because notice your stub shaft has got an arc right here. You want to make sure that your socket is right in the center of that arc right there to keep the pressure off as, as much as possible. Keep your pressure pushing on the U joint and not on the stub shaft. Then you make sure your post here is centered inside that cup and start pressing.
Hit up with jack handle. Ha oh. It works. Oh, there's that pop. That pop freaks everybody out. I'll be the newbies anyway. Alright, it's three good enough. Uh, muscle pliers. I know the first time it happened to me and I was pressing, I was pressing, it wouldn't move and all of a sudden that sucker popped. I was like, oh my god, what'd I break? It's hard to have that capper loose and only you just gotta press it right back through. Does not make me feel warm or fuzzy at all. I don't like this pressing. Okay, so we just ran into something that I'd never seen happen before. When normally what happens, you press the U-joint through one way and you got your cap still stuck here, so then you press it back through the other way, which pushes the cap at the top, and then it gives you enough room to bring your cross out, okay? Like, you know, I can bring it out like that right there. Let me do it again because I was like off camera. But the cross is supposed to come out. Once you get the caps off both sides, the cross will drop down like this and come out the top like that. But the process of us pushing that cap back through the other side, something weird happened. See, right here, got a bottom to it, right? Well, all of a sudden, the bottom of this cross right here busted the bottom of this right here, so it wouldn't press it out. We were kind of like, what the heck's going on? So we had to pause, take it out, look at it. When I flipped it over, I seen that the whole bottom was busted out. Trick, we had to figure something out. Here's how it ended up. So what I did is took my press plate that you guys seen that where I had the joint laying on this. Took the press plate, laid the edge of the cup. Imagine this right here being the press plate. Laid the edge of the cup down here. Tilted it just enough that the U-joint gave us room here in the cross. Took the hammer, smacked it, busted the rubber remaining of the cap. Because remember what I said, this bottom right here was gone. So we had nothing but a ring left. We had no way of pressing it. So I laid that, uh, laid down there, dad smacked it with a hammer. This stuff right here is so hard, it's brittle. So it just shattered it. And then we were able to get the cross out. So let's put the new one in now. Look at all the bearings in there. Yucky. So there's what I was talking about. I blew the bottom of the calf out. That was right there. So whenever that was gone, I could no longer press it through. That's what happened. 
But take your axle shaft, your stub shaft, take your rag, get inside here, clean all the junk out because you want no zero, not a debris up inside there. So clean that stuff out of there, make it nice, smooth, and clean. Now your new U-joint, what you want to do is gently pull your caps. Don't snatch them. Gently pull them. If you feel a little bit of resistance, just twist the cap until it comes off. Because here's what you got. See all those nice little neat needle bearings inside there? Don't knock them out of line because they're no fun to put back in. Trust me, I know this. Lay it off to the side. Lay it somewhere where you don't accidentally bump it, kick it, or anything. This one, same thing. Pull it out, because see, all the needle bearings are all perfectly in line. Then what you want to do is take, drop your cross. If you want to, you can take these off too, but for right now I'm not. Drop your cross down through there, like that. See? Drop the cross down through. Take your cap, put it right on the bottom there. Drop your cross down inside there because what that's going to be doing is supporting your bearings so they don't get knocked all out of whack and you got a mess on your hands. Hold your cross here, flip it over. And honestly, at this point, we could probably take a hammer and tap this in. It should be pretty easy to go from here. From this point on, I think it's pretty easy enough. We can just tap it out with a hammer. Now, Notice he's pulling up on the cross here, which supports the bearings. Do not let that drop. Now, there's a couple points you can't go no further because your cross is going to be hitting on whatever you're down here. And you I. Got, got much more. Yeah, there's plenty of room. I hear it coming. Somebody's going to call me out on it. Well, you got a visor up there. You can do it on that. And yeah, you're right. You can. Because I've done it. But guess what? We're not doing it that way. Now, notice I'm not driving it home yet because what you want from there before you get it, before you hit it too hard, this pretty much just seats it. Before you drive it home, you want to get your socket and hit it from the outside. Or that funky tool that I made that didn't work with the snot. Now, here's what I was talking to my mom to go. Here's the end of your cross. As far as, if it starts getting flush with this right here, you're going to damage the end of your cross. So stop before it hits anything down below us. So and now we're going to use your socket. So we're going to use your socket support here. Keep the weight upward on the cross, pushing up into the bearings. Otherwise, your bearings get knocked out of line. And you have to take it back up. Yeah, then you got to it all over again. I come to the conclusion my little tool that I made is actually more aggravating than it's worth. So we'll just use this to drive it through. See, she's sliding through pretty good right now. That should do. Right there. And what you want to stop before it comes through, stop before it comes through, okay? Okay, we brought it down a little bit. Create a little gap right here to bring your cross up because what you want from there. Make sure your cross here has no debris on it. Take your bearing, gently work it on there. Now, you press it down a little bit. Now you can see you're pushing down the cross here. You're home. <laughs> then you're home free from right there. About that time, let's go ahead and put it in now. Now, before you get too froggy driving her home, because you see I've already moved this cap some, go ahead and take your clip, snap it in place. Now we got a clip snapped in place, and now we can drive us right here all the way home. Now, you put your clip in, make sure that the ends here are up uh, out of being from down inside here because it'll cause it to bind up on you, like it just did on me. My clips are right there's the end of one of them, not tucked underneath here. 
Here's the other end of the clip, not tucked underneath there. Now, right now, my bottom here is bottoming out on the vise. Time for the socket. Put it right there. Put this there. Let's see where we're at. Oh, we're about there. So look, you start seeing your groove show up. Looks like we might just have enough room to pop the clip on. Look at that. We can do it. We can do it. Now, once you get that done, take your screwdriver right on the top right there, on the top of the clip, and just tap it. You ain't got to smack it or nothing. Just tap it in there. Make sure it's seated. Now, we're going to put the sub... We're going to take the stub shaft and join it to the axle. Again, taking your bearings, slowly pull them, kind of tilt them back like a straight here a little bit, keeping those bearings intact. Then we're going to take our stub shaft, drop it down side like this right here, recess it back far enough, it'll fall back in, it'll come up. Then we take our bearing caps, kind of roll to the side because you want to keep your bearings intact as much as possible. Feel for it because you'll know whenever you get on there, there it goes. Then push your cross into the bearing cap. And hold the cross up into the bearing cap and turn it around. Maybe thumb back making me nervous. Do what? So maybe thumb back away. I hate screw. See, slide the shaft down a little bit. Or slide the vice foot. Now you want to drive it through just a little bit. But try not to drive it all the way through because then you're going to have a problem lining the cap back up. Now, rotate it. Make sure you got no junk on the cross. There we go. Pick your cross up just a little bit up out of there. Get your bearings seated. You feel them fall in place. And the seals want to come off. See right there. <clears throat> Wanna put a clamp on it and squeeze it? I think I've got it tucked in right there and I think it's gonna go. What that contraption actually has a certain tile or whatever, but I like it. I have a rack you actually use for a hammer. Then you turn it back around like this. Put your kicker on. See where it's at. 
it's good about do, I guess. It ain't quite there, but it'll work now. We're back around that box, or is that them? No, that ain't them, that's that one. Okay, put in your, keep your snap rings in. Camera shot. Okay, put your snap ring, bleh. Put your snap ring shots. Put in your snap rings in. Move your stub shaft over to the side. Come see your C shape here. Come right on top of the cap like that. Get up here where I can get some leverage on it. I had to stand up so I get some leverage on it. But you see the ends of it right here and right there. Don't make it roll up underneath here because as you push that cap back this way, if that end is stuck up underneath there, it'll cause the cap to bind and won't allow it to come all the way across and enable you to get that other snap ring in. So, let's drive her on over. Now we're getting to the point where we got to put the socket underneath the cap down here to allow it to come through. Just, yeah, that's right one. Because otherwise you're beating your cap or the bottom one here directly onto the vise in this case. And you're not going to get anywhere. Because it just likes a little bit more. Then you're going to take your hammer and whatever tool you can to get on the top of your rings like this. You ain't got to hit them hard. Just tap them and make sure they're seated. So while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and put new brake uh, pads on it because obviously these are a little bit worn out. Just take your OC clamp, put it on the back side of your caliper, tighten the clamp up very slowly, it'll push that piston right on in. Okay, let's put our axle shaft in now. Take, make sure your splines are clean. Cause that's going to put inside the differential where all your differential grease and all stuff is here is where your seal rides make sure that's clean now feed the axle shaft in what you want to do is the problem the really only downside to these axles are they have no outside seal so any of your junk debris mud whatever gets up inside the axle tube now like i said right here is where the seal rides so way up inside where the pumpkin is that's where the seal's at. So what you want to try to do as little as possible when you feed the axle shaft in, it, let it ride like you're shooting pull. See, I got my fingers right here. Let it ride on the shaft there until you feel you hit the seal. Don't hit the seal hard. But why, why am I doing that? Because all that junk inside that axle tube right there, if you're pushing it, you're gonna push that junk up next to the seal, potentially push it into the differential. Right now I'm letting it rise, so I take my hand. Gotta lay it down slowly. Take my hand back here. Got let it sit there, straighten out my stub shaft. It should be getting close now. Okay, I feel I'm, hit, I'm hitting the seal now, so you gotta be careful. Don't push the seal in. I'm hitting something. There she goes. Now, now I got to play with it until I get the splines engaged. Well, I got lucky. Okay, the splines are engaged because I can feel the pump. I've been moving the dry shaft. I can see it moving. Well, that just fell right up in there. Okay, now our next very vital ingredient. 
Yes, it's an old can, but hey, the stuff never goes bad. Anti-seize. Always, always use it right here because you will thank yourself later, as we did. Because whenever he changed that bearing out a while back, he put the anti-seize in. And it came apart very easily. There's that. Now you can put it on the shaft, on the splines especially. That's where it gets stuck at the most. I know somebody's going to say, well, dude, you got a brush. Use it. Well, sometimes intelligence isn't my best thing. And you know how that stuff gets all over everything? Wipe it off. Wouldn't hurt also to put it like right back on the back side of the here. More times than not, when the wheel bearing or unit bearing, whatever it is you want to call it, gets stuck, it's because of the splines. Now see, this is one of those places where I'm going to be real with y'all. We were just looking for the bowl, so I said, oh crap, I forgot to do something. Yeah. Anyway, good thing I didn't tighten it down. Pull the bearing. See, I could have done a magic movie edit and say, hey look, I did perfect. Set it in like that. So it's going to go under like this. Step goes in toward your ball joints and tie rod ends and all that kind of fun stuff. But take your bearing, put it in place. Pull it up over that step. Work your bearing in place. Rotate it till your bolts start lining up. A little anti seize on the bolts here. And for right now, I'm just going to run through one of them so I can get the bearing and all that fun stuff lined up. Go through that one. Rotate the bearing. Sometimes your bearing wants to get a little Katie Wampus on you, so you gotta straighten it out. And when you start your bolts and stuff, just put them in like one thread or so. Because once you get all three of them lined up, then you can start tightening it down. But if you tighten them down too quickly, you end up binding the unit bearing possibly crack in the ear or just cause a major headache trying to make everything line up. So don't do that. Put about a thread of each one. Once you get it all lined up, then you can start putting tightening down. Then we got a 13 millimeter 12 point. Again, notice I didn't. Whenever I tighten this one down, I only turned it a few times. I got the surface of the bolt. Let me show you. Look, right there's the end of the bolt popping out of the unit bearing. I did not start cranking it all the way down or even seating it for that matter. Go around to each one, run it into about that distance. You know you're got a good engagement. And then you start cinching the unit bearing down because you don't want to pull it crooked and risk cracking the ears and causing yourself a lot of headache. Okay, so I've got that bolt coming through. Push on your bearing a little bit. 
feel like a seating. Come over here, run this one in until it touches. Until it touches, not tight. Okay, I've got this one is just touching back here, not tight, nothing. It just touched the spindle. Because also, once you get to the point of got touches, you're right here. You can see there's your spindle, here's your backing plate, and there's your unit bearing. You can see that's already touched, it's already pulled up. So at this point, you can go ahead and start tightening everything up. Now here's a recommendation I'm going to do a lot for a lot of you guys. I, depending on the rig, rust bucket, I will definitely do it. My 91, it doesn't see a whole lot of wheel time, so I probably won't do it to it. Who knows? Because it's just a mess. If you do a whole lot of off road, and especially if you get to a lot of water stuff, this surface right through here and here, this is where your brake disc slides on. Get you some antecedents, get in behind it, because what happens if you get out of wheeling a lot, and if you don't, like, okay, I'm home, tear, tear the rig down. Let's check all the oil and the fluids and their differentials. Make sure I didn't take on any water and stuff, all that kind of fun stuff. If you don't do that religiously, what's going to end up happening is your brake disc and stuff will want to seize up to this right here. So if you do off-road a lot in water especially, put your antecedents on the surface right here. Street rigs, I don't do it because, well, antecedents is just a mess, to be honest with you. So off-roading, a lot of water, antecedents. You got a pavement princess, don't worry about it. Okay, now for our spindle nut here, clean everything up real well. And as you see right there, anti-seize. And get a little bit of debris right there, get all that out. Paint the back side of your washer because you ain't got to worry about cramming it up inside there that way. Just paint the back side of your washer. Put a little bit on your threads. And you don't have to use a lot. Just paint a little dab right there. It'll take care of business on its own. Run your washer up the side there. Take your washer. Go wee. Turn it like that right there. Why? Because I only painted just a couple of spots. But if you take your washer and turn it, it puts a nice little film back there. And for the nut going on, because I'm painting one spot, as you screw the nut on, what does it do, people? It just runs it right through the threads. So you don't have to get carried away. A little bit goes a long way. Look how old that can is. That thing is like ridiculously, I don't know how old, a lot. And we're on the same can. It still works perfect because you don't have to abuse the use of it. Now, as you tighten this up, you'll see the axle shaft start pulling out this way. Then you take your ratchet, get it good and snug, then you want to get your uh, torque wrench, and I'll get the torque and I'll pop it up here on the screen here somewhere. Then once you get that baby cranked down, remember the order of operations of how things go back together. You got your little spring right here. Clean it well. It goes right there. And where'd the car key go? It should have been. You probably got your knee on it. For the what now? The key. Right here. Okay. Take your spring. Place it there. And look at where... There's the hole for where your uh, key goes down through, your cotter key. Right there it is. No, I'm not going to use this ring. I'm just clearing it out so it's easily visible whenever I put my little castle. I can't really call it a castle nut. Castle retaining thingy, whatever. Look at it and say, hmm, does it go there? Nope. Won't work there. Turn it a little bit more. Nope. Uh, that's close. Oh, that works though. See what I did? 
because I started right here. Okay, let's go right here. This tab will get you guys a better shot. Watch real close. Here's the hole, see it? Right there. That tab is sitting on top of the hole. That won't work. You need to put the key through it. Turn it one more notch, push. Okay, I can peek over it right here, but still not gonna work. Turn it one more time. Ta-da! Guess what? That'll work. Run your collar key down through there and bend it in place. Again, I'll repeat, it's one of those choices to where if you do a lot of off-road wheeling and stuff like that, put the anisees on the back side here. I have seen them proceed up on it. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Because most of the time you kick the snot out of them, they'll break loose. All right, so we got that in place. And now it breaks. Taking these brake pads off. There's a little bit of a trick. A lot of people want to pull the spring back and pull, 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 thinking you're going to get someplace and you're not going to get anywhere. Take your pad, push that way. Push your pad that way. Then pull upward a little bit. See, it unlocks. Push that way. Okay, I thank you too. And I hope you have a good day. Pull it up. And there you go. Simple as that. Why is it like that? Because you got holes right here. See these holes? Yep. You also got little post right here that engage inside those so the mistake people make is they're trying to pull the spring back and push up on the pad it, it doesn't work that way because of those posts right there are engaged in that hole it's not going to move they're designed like it so they don't wiggle back and forth and all that kind of crazy stuff so push your pad that way then up that way then up you slide them right out take this pad out first because this one will now have room to come all the way out Oftentimes, if you've got enough brake pad left over here, the thickness between the two will only allow you to come out so far and you can't get it off the piston here. Just cool. Alrighty, there you go. Then clean up our piston, clean up the main surface over here. Now, I'm a diehard believer of this stuff. This right here. I have seen people with squeaky brakes, and I put, I don't do anything to the, you know, use the exact same pads they had, they had squeaky brakes. I'll take, put this on behind the brakes, which you'll see me put the new ones on here in a moment. And they're just quiet because they provide a insulator. It dries into like a rubber. And makes a bonding type insulator that is not hard to come off at all. So, you know, you go do your brakes later on. Don't think that, oh my gosh, I can't get this stuff off because it's glued on. It's not like that at all. It just makes a really thin insulator film. And you don't have to put a lot on there. I don't know how many times I heard people say, I ain't gotta use that stuff. And they wonder why they got squeaky brakes. <coughs> Chatters. Yeah, exactly. I think my bottle's got a few holes in it. And put it right here. Just where the pad contacts. You ain't gotta get crazy and putting it everywhere. If you do put too much, it ain't got hurt nothing. <coughs> now, take your new pad. Be sure what you want to do is look at. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it don't. But you look at them and say, hmm, is this correct? Is this but don't go face to face like this right here because they're going to be backwards. Turn them like this. Springs, my viewfinder. Springs are facing up. Look, you've got the little notch here, notch here. Oh, viewfinder's got me messed up. Right here, right here. Therefore, you know you got the right side. Because I have made that mistake several times. Get in there and push. Let's snap that thing in there. Good Lord. Yep, these are new ones. 
Ah, there it goes. Now your little slider pins back here, make sure they're pushed back because it goes over top of the spindle as you'll see here in a moment. It's easy to take a slow slider as you put them on and to push them forward. Now if you can if you can slide them like this right here and they're that easy, don't worry about it, you're good. But if you're sliding and they feel notchy, grindy, or you got a stuck place, pull them out, clean them, re-grease them, okay? But these, they feel perfect, so we're good. Again, one of those things too, if you go a lot of off-roading uh, in Jeeps and such with water, that's going to be one of your places that may give you problems later on. Again, look at it. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. See, that's why you check them. Why is this wrong? Look, you got the little kit. You got the little notch right here, but it's got the hook right here. Wrong one. Get the other one. So therefore, we got this one. We got notch, notch, hook, hook. We got the right side. Take get on there. Pull your spring just a little bit to give yourself a little working room. Pull your spring a little bit. There's those little posts right there. Push the post that way. Pull your spring. Get over top of it. Bring it down. Work it. Oh, that one popped. And you, there it goes. You just got to find that sweet spot where they're both pop in place. Ta-da! You just put new pads on. Now, take your rotor. I mean, rotor. Your caliper. Bring it over your rotor like this. Rotate it in. Now, there's a trick that catches it about most of your newbies, okay? This can be either very difficult or very hard, depending on how you do it. Let me change the camera angles on you. Now pay attention to how I'm doing this. A lot of people just want to slap it up for like, shove that sucker on or it ain't gonna work that way, people. There's a reason these shoes have notches. See that notch right there? Look right there. Take your caliper like this. See how I got laid back? Rotate it up to your disc. That keeps those notches on top of your spindle right here. Keeps it properly aligned and as you rotate it up, and you may have to work with it a little bit. But the idea is keeping those notches on this. And I'm trying to straddle the camera while I'm doing this. Kind of. Okay, look. I'm going to move the camera out of the way, but you got the point. Okay, so I'm shoving this copper, shoving this copper. It ain't moving. Do y'all see what's going on? Get a little closer. I know you see some mechanics are catching it right now. But you newbies, that's why I do this. That's why I do this for the new new people who's never done this before, because you're gonna you're not gonna get anywhere. What do you have to do to fix this? Take your thumb. See that right there? It moved forward on me. Push it back. Look at that. We do that again. Look, look how simple that was. Again, see that little sleeve. Watch what happens to the copper when I move it. I'm trying to make it really dramatic here for you so you can really see it. Push it over, push it over. Oh, look at that. It just fell right in by itself. Yeah, at that point, you just got to work with it a little bit, get that line up, because we're hooked right here. That's where I said that notch has got to be on the spindle. The hook's falling here. That is why you take your caliper hook here, bring it forward, pay attention to these right here, so they stay back further enough to allow it to go onto the spindle. All right, now we just got to get our bolts back here and get them babies in there, and you're home free. Now we're putting our caliper bolts in. Sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's not. There's not no real magic trick. There is for the second one, the first one there's not. Here's what I mean. Because it is slightly still out of line because, hey, look, I can't start my threads. You can look right along there. It might be pulled back enough to get lined up. Long story short, what you just want to do is grab your caliper, move it around, and you'll feel this catch a hole. And once you feel it catch the hole, the threaded holder, then you start it. That's the hard part. The easy part is the second one, and I'll show you that here in a moment. Okay, here's what ended up happening. To show you on the bolt itself, look right, where's the bolt at? See right there where you got all this thread, and all of a sudden you got no threads. That little spot right there is what helps you line things up. So what I ended up doing, I kept... I push the caliper, pull the caliper, and push in at the same time on the bolt. What I ended up doing is pulling out on the caliper, pull the caliper back at me toward the rear of the Jeep. As I was pushing in on the bolt, then I felt the bolt go pop. That's what it's, oh, there it is. And then you start tightening it up. Okay, at this point, the top bolt should be pretty, 
much much easier because at this point what we're going to do is push in on the boat okay see it's not engaged you know work the uh, caliper back and forth and i pushed in okay i felt a pop on the bolt do i have it look at that mm-hmm let's different let's represent again okay look i just knocked it out of white man that's all right my mistake is y'all education why I had hung up was the end of that bolt was hanging on the spindle, so I pulled that back and we're good to go again. So again, watch. Get you guys a close up on the boat. I want you to see how this works so you know what to do. Watch my finger on the boat, okay? I'm pushing on it, I'm pushing it. Look, it won't, it ain't going nowhere. Push in on the caliper. Push the caliper in toward your disc. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Uh, did you hear that? Pull it back a little bit more. I'll try it one more time. Listen real close. Push. I'm pushing. Uh, it's felt it pop. Look at this. Take your ratchet. Tighten it up. Is where we and for all you torque Nazis, I'll pop, I'll look at the torque and pop it up here in the video. Me, I've done this for so many years. I know about right there's good and no tighter. I know y'all got a lot out of that, didn't you? Like I said, I'll pop up the torque specs for you. But notice my hand position on the ratchet, okay? Like this right here, I just had it palmed. I wasn't really gripping the ratchet. I wasn't standing up. I'm just simply pushing down on the ratchet. Your body position, your hand position, all sort of different factors will play into how much torque you can even apply onto a, onto a uh, bolt. So with, I was just palming it, like right here, I had my fingers curled just for our st stability, but really that's all the pressure I could put on it. If I stand up, then I could twist the bolt in half if I wanted to. Body position has a lot to do with how much torque you can apply to a fastener. Okay, now put your wheel on. If you've made it this far and you've got it back together, sure you can get the wheel on. So, okay, we're going to end the video here and I'll close you up in just a moment. All right, everyone, we're putting the tire wheel back on here. And there's just one thing I want to point out. I don't have many pet peeves in life, but if I walk into a shop and I see a shop stick that into an impact, stick it to a lug stud, and that will make me go nuts, okay? Take this. If you're using impacts, great, because I use them all the time. Take here, one, two, three, four, five, minimum, okay? That will prevent you from cross-threading your lug studs. Ain't nothing that irritates the crap out of me worse than seeing somebody do something like that. So that is for your protection. My rant is for your education. There you go. So I was gonna do this video's closing with the TJ in the background, but we decided to go ahead and take it on up to his house. Well, he was driving his truck, so he went and left on out. I had the key to his Jeep, and I had to run inside, get my license, my wallet, and all stuff like that, you know. So he had already left out. I back his Jeep up, and I hear click, 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 click. I'm like, what the heck is this? So I drive it on up the road and everything. Get up there, pull in his driveway, and I turn hard driver, checking the driver's side U joint. It's solid. All right, so I jump, slide under the Jeep, see what's going on. The front drive shaft has a loose U joint in it as well not just okay let's explain something to you 90 percent of my 95 percent of my videos are yj's the yj drive shaft has a huge one up front and a huge one up in the rear call it a day you're done two huge ones at a yj drive shaft tj's are different tj's have a front regular u joint but in the back it has a cardigan joint means it has two u joints in the back well guess which one's bad that's right the one by the transfer case so what we're going to have to do is pull that trap pull that drive shaft out and rebuild it so that's probably an upcoming video sometime soon it's not like oh my gosh it's about to fly apart bad but it needs to be taken care of pretty soon so will it be the next video no it won't but it will be coming soon yes it will so i jump in his jeep to drive it up to his house brake pedal hits the floor i'm like man i forgot to remind you guys of something whenever you take your brake caliper and you spread that you push that piston back you're spreading the distance between the disc and your brake pads. So whenever you first, your first couple pushes on your brake pedal, you're closing that gap up between your brake pads and your disc. So your first couple pedal pushes, you may not have brakes at all. 
So after you've had the caliper off and you've pushed that piston back and all that kind of fun stuff that's dealing with brakes, before you take off, push that pedal until you got pedal. Because you don't want to, if it's an automatic, you don't want to put it in gear and take off and all of a sudden you've got no brakes or anything. Or even with a stick shift, you know, you throw a sucker in reverse and you take off and you go to stop like at the end of my driveway here. If I was to have taken off and there's a car coming up the road before I pump the pedals, I could have hit a car, you know. But again, I, I jumped in instinctively because I've been doing this for so many years. I hit that pedal a couple times and what reminded me was me not telling you guys. I knew what was going to happen, but I forgot to tell you guys about it. So hit that brake pedal a couple of times to seat them paths to that rotor so you don't cause an accident or, you know, something weird. Who knows? So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, hit me with a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some cool comments down below. And I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.